All right, so we're going to do some more solving radical equations. We kind of introduced the concept in the last one. We said our goal is to isolate the radical as much as we can and then to square it away uh, just like we, we would with any other expression uh, to try to get x outside of that radical. All right, so in this case, uh, this example, we're, we're going to be looking at some slightly more advanced versions where things don't work out as nicely. We're trying to isolate the radical, but maybe you know we can't, or maybe the expression on the other side is really complex, and we're going to see that sometimes we have to rely on on some not nice answers uh, and some some like more advanced algebra to get to our, our solution. So in this case, I'm trying to isolate this problem here. I'm trying to isolate my radical. So this is my expression that I would like to be alone. I want this to be the only thing on the left-hand side. So let's get rid of the other things that are on the left-hand side. Remember, we always undo our addition and subtraction first, and then we undo our divisions, uh, multiplication and division. So I'm going to start this one off, and, and I'm going to just kind of pull all that stuff over to the other side in one big step. Right? So x plus 5 is alone. Okay? I would first have to subtract the 2, and then I would need to divide by 3. So I end up with this expression on the left. I can't put any of this together because x does not combine with 2, and I can't divide that answer because I can't simplify it. So this is as simple as I can get it. So now my radical is alone, and so now is that step where we want to square away the radical. So the left-hand side works out real nice. I get this, th this expression, x plus 5 is equal to. And now I, that, here's where we run into the advanced part of this, is that I need to square this big expression here, which is not really all that nice. Okay? So let's kind of take it in pieces. The denominator squares nicely. It's just a regular old 3. So 3 squared is 9. Okay? And the, left, uh, the, the numerator is, is this expression. It says x minus 2 squared. Well, what does x minus 2 squared mean? It means x minus 2 times x minus 2. So let's multiply all this out and see what we get. It looks like x squared minus 4x plus 4. This expression represents my numerator, okay, which is x minus 2 squared. That's this thing. So let's put this in the numerator now. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay. So now I'm looking at this and saying, how do I solve this thing? Right? So our goal is to try to get the x's all on the same side. Whenever I have a quadratic, right, a squared showing up, I'd like the stuff on the right or on the left here to be moved over here with the, the right-hand side. So before, in order for me to combine these, I don't really want there to be a fraction. So I'm going to start off by saying, let's get rid of the dividing by 9 by taking both sides and multiplying them by 9. So let's see where I end up. This left-hand side looks now 9x plus 45. And then these are going to cancel on the right, and I end up with just x squared minus 4x plus 4. Okay? So now I'm kind of getting to the point where this looks like a pretty normal equation to solve. Let's subtract the, the uh, expression on the left over to be with the equation on the right, or the expression on the right. It's x squared. When I do negative 4x minus 9x, I get negative 13x. And when I do 4 minus 45, it looks like I get a negative 41. So now my goal is, how do I solve this quadratic equation? Well, we can try factoring all we want, but this is, is not going to factor because 41 is a prime number. We're not going to be able to find anything that multiplies to negative 30 or negative or adds to negative 13 because my only factors are 41 and 1. Okay, so it looks like my only backup is to use the quadratic formula. So this looks like 13 plus or minus inside of my radical I have negative 13 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 41 okay and it's all over 2a my a in this case is just the 1 so it's 2 times 1 okay so let's simplify inside the radical a little bit my first expression the negative 13 squared just becomes 169 okay so this is 169 and then if I multiply together negative 4 times 1 times negative 41, it looks like I get 164. So this is 169 plus, and I know that because it's negative times negative, plus 164 all over 2. Okay? And so if I simplify the inside of the radical a little bit more, it's 13 plus or minus the square root of, it looks like 333 all over 2. And guess what? This is as simple as I can make that radical. And we're going to leave it in simplest radical form. And so I'm going to say this right here represents my solution. It's not nice, right? It, but it is my simplest radical form of the expression. Right? So you can see I, I kind of followed the same process. I still got my radical alone, and then I squared it away. It's just that when I squared the right-hand side, I kind of had this messier-looking expression to square. Right? And then we had to figure out how do I solve an equation that looks like this. All right, we got rid of the fraction. 
we isolated the uh, all of the expressions to one side and set it equal to zero, and then we were, we had to use the quadratic formula in order to solve. Okay, so let's take a look at one more slightly more advanced radical problem. Okay, and that's going to look like this. <clears throat> so this one is is actually kind of similar to the last one, in that my right hand side is is kind of nicely isolated for us already. So this looks like something that I could just square. Okay, however. That means that I got to square this whole big thing on the left hand side. It's actually impossible in this problem to isolate both of the radicals in the problem. If I tried to move the two over to the right hand side, I great, I isolated the left, but then I just kind of like unisolated the right hand side. So that's that's the issue that I run into. I need to square something that's not really all that nice on the left. So the right hand side's my easy one. That's just squaring a square root. Both of them cancel. And I end up with 3x plus 1. So now i got to figure out how do I square this thing. All right, so let's try to see if we can figure this out. Um, squaring means multiplying it by itself. So I'm just going to say this is the square root of x plus 2 times itself. Okay. And now i got to, looks like, foil out this expression. So let's see what happens when, when I foil. The square root of x times the square root of x. Okay, that's my first term. That's just x. The square root of x times 2 is 2 square root of x. I can't really combine those. I get another 2 square root of x when I move on to the second term in my FOIL. Right? Another 2 square root of x. And then at the end I get a 2 times 2 which is 4. Okay, So this looks like e what's equal to 3x plus 1. Okay, So I'm going to do a little cleaning up. I see that these two middle terms can go together. So this becomes 4 times the square root of x. And then I'll just bring down my x and my 4. Okay, So let's stop right here and let's kind of reassess where we're at. I'm looking at this thing. And I'm saying, all right, I have to solve a radical equation. How do I solve radical equations? Okay, I solve radical equations by getting the radical alone and then squaring away the radical. All right, so let's take a look where I'm at. Well, I can move some stuff away from this radical. I have another radical here, the square root of x. So I'm going to get that radical alone again. So I'm going to subtract this x over to the right. All right, so it's going to look like on the right-hand side now 2x. And I'm also going to subtract this 4 over, which means it's going to be 1 minus 4, which in this case is negative 3. Okay, so now it looks like 4 times the square root of x. Right? So I kind of just got rid of these nice x and 4 values that are not radicals, and I move them over with things that are like them. Okay? So now if I get rid of this 4, guess what? I just isolated my radical again. Okay? So this problem is different because now I have to isolate my radical twice. It was isolated at the beginning and I could square and then I had all this work to do to get my my radical of my second radical that's still floating around like I fixed the right hand side got rid of that radical but I didn't fix the left hand side so I had to isolate that one and now I can square again so I'm gonna square away this square root which again means now I have this kind of fraction expression that I got to square all right, so let's see what this ends up being. The left-hand side, square and square root, cancel each other out. I just end up with x. On the right-hand side, I'll let you square 2x minus 3 on your own. It becomes 4x squared minus 12x, okay, and plus 9. And it's all over. Don't forget to square the denominator. That is 16, okay? So we just saw in the last problem that I can just multiply away this 16 to make this not a fraction. And it looks like it's going to be 16x is equal to 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. Okay, So to set this equal to 0, it looks like I have to subtract my 16 over. And it's going to become a 0 on the left and 4x squared minus 28x plus 9 on the left on the right hand side. So now i got to solve this again. And guess what? It also does not factor, which means I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So let's use the quadratic formula one more time, and then we are done. Okay, this looks like 28 plus or minus the square root of. Negative 28 squared is my b value, okay, minus 4 times 4 times 9, all over my 2a. My a in this case is 4, so it's 2 times 4. So that's what my x is equal to. So let's simplify the inside of the radical a lot. 28 plus or minus, well, 28 squared, let's find out what that is. 28 times 28 is 784. So this is the square root of 784 minus... 4 times 4 times 9 is the same as 16 times 9, which is 144. Okay. All over 2 times 4, well, 2 times 4 I know is 8. Okay, So I can simplify my radical a little bit more. 784 okay, minus 144 
is 640. So this inside of my radical is now just 640 all over 8. And remember the last problem, at this point we're done. Here we're going to do a little bit more simplifying because 640 has a 64 in it. And if I square root that 64, I end up with an 8. Okay, 8 root 10. Okay, Oops, sorry, that's a 10. All over 8. And now I'm going to be a, a stickler and say, you know what, 28 over 8 and 8 over 8 are fractions that can be simplified. Okay, so I can say if I divide all of them by 4, I can at least get this down to 7 plus or minus okay, um, 2 root 10 all over 2. And I'd say this is my most simple radical that will represent the solution to my original problem that was way up here, okay, which again involved two different squarings before I was able to get rid of all my radicals and solve my quadratic equation.